I, I uh, love your background, Brandon. It's so intense that it's like, but my my gut is like that's a green screen, but I know it's not. Yeah, you know what? The the green screen works really well. Like there's no clipping at all. Like it's really kind of nice. But yeah, you know, grab stuff right off the back. <laughs> you don't have a dragon yeah. off back there, do you? Uh, yes, right up there. Uh, SVD. Yeah. Nice. The uh, the the Papa Shaw is that a re- is that Filato? The PPS. Uh, yeah, the, it's currently got a uh, MP40 magazine um, magwell in it because so I put cool. it in for a video and I couldn't figure out how to get it out. It is stuck, so it's just uh-huh. it lives there now. So Brandon, That's I'm a little cool. mick. Which which is your left? Raise your right hand for me, would you? Right hand. Okay, right side, third one down. That is a what? VSS Vintores or Vintores. Oh, so the I... the super super quiet Tarkov boy, the nine by thirty nine. I was just gonna say I used it in Tarkov. I didn't recognize it. Like this. What is the absolute worst gun behind you? The the one that Ooh. like if you had to get in a conflict, you're like fuck, not this one. <laughs> I'd rather have a knife. Yeah. Ew, Jesus. Well, probably the RPG because it's demilled. Uh, yeah. So that one, that's not absurdly <laughs> useful. Um, <laughs> no, that's an impact RPG. You have to hit him. Yeah, it's more of a deal. bludgeon. You know, it's a big steel tube, so you'll still get some shit done. What is uh, the short one near that white plaque, sort of diagonally? The short one? So there's a white plaque. Y- yep. Yeah, one? and then diagonal. Uh, nope, just oh. to the corner of it. No. Or the other way. That's the fun one. Though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the 1887, uh, model 1887. What? And just the, yeah. It's so like the, these the, video games are based on real guns. <laughs> it's crazy, right? They made the, they made the Terminator 2 gun in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, speaking of the RPG, that just made me think. A, a friend of mine, like 10, 11 years ago, was in Afghanistan. He was a Marine. And he had some some very intense stories and he was telling us one time when he when he has some drinks he'll he'll talk about it a bit and one of the most traumatic things he said he saw was he was on patrol like 20 30 yards in between everyone as they're walking through and he said that they started getting shot at and they saw like rpgs coming in and he was like there's no way to predict rpgs like you just don't really fucking know where it's gonna go and he said at the time like they'd had an issue with like RPGs being shot at them and not exploding like they weren't blowing up the, the insurgents whoever was shooting good problem and to have good problem to have the guy he told me the guy three people in front of him so like 90 yards in front of him a RPG came in and it hit him uh, it didn't explode but it hit him in the quad and I've it seen like tore into his basically destroyed his entire like quadricep just ripping it apart just mechanically and yeah. he like when he told me that, he's like, dude, like, like you can confirm this. Like, this was a story. Like, in it's the military, I, w- I was there for this. Did, it, and, did he survive? Uh, the guy did survive, I, I, if I recall. Yeah. The best part of the story, though, is it didn't pass through his quad. It, it was in. It stuck. Yeah. It's halfway in, halfway out of his leg. One of my best friends was on that that patrol. Yeah, he, he was and, there. And, and those things have come with all kinds of different warheads, but... It doesn't matter what kind of warhead it is when it's in your thigh. <laughs> if it goes it, 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 off, you, you know, panic so out. much. Yeah. And like, it, it doesn't even have to explode. Like once it's ripped your thigh, do you know how much important shit is in your thigh? Most so much, it. so much yeah. blood going through there. Like it's almost surprising. He didn't I don't keep I, anything I, important I in my die. thighs. You don't? Your pockets mm-hmm. are. Oh, that's true. My phone's near my thighs. See, if it, if it was your cap. <laughs> Did it hit my phone? Did it hit my phone? <laughs> I can't look. If it was your cap, it would have bounced off. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else would have got caught with the Brandon knows the lore. You know, I, 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 had a dummy, I had a dummy RPG like that laying on the floor. And uh, after that, I was I was in jail that night when I, when I first got arrested. It's like 3, 4 in the morning. And they come wake me up. And like, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta go through a whole thing to get out of your jail cell and into a room with normal people. There's shackles and shit and eh, uh, door gates moving and i finally get out there and the feds are there and they're like hey um the uh the rpg warhead in the floor um to do with that i was like it's not real it's rubber he said okay turn around and left and that was it it was the most brief comp because i they were just like looking into my room it was the room where i used to record that blue mm-hmm. room yeah. it just laying on the floor in there <laughs> <laughs> but they were they freaked just out they didn't mess with it it's amazing I mean, it how looked many like people... a piece of rubber though that was true i assume it's of not course, really I didn't have a live warhead. <laughs> oh, like that'd be wildly out of character. It would like, be wildly yeah. out of character. Like, I mean, that was my goal was to make my own, right? When that's why I wanted a Type Ten and FEL and like like all the bits and bobs. But no, that was a chunk of rubber that I bought at Knob Creek. 
Yeah, it's, it's amazing how much those people, uh, like even in the ATF and whatnot, don't know about like the launchers and explosive side of things, uh, or especially like the average person. So a buddy of mine was filming a music video and he wanted me to help him out. And uh, they, they basically had their own bit of like a nightclub cordoned off for, for filming his video. And he's like, could you bring your AT4? I just, you know, AT4, once you fire, it's a tube, you know, it's, mm. it, it's not going to, you're not going to be taken out. It's like an it. American RPG. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of it's 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 a good bit bigger, uh, bigger tube. But uh, you know, you, you've probably seen it in Call of Duty and a bunch of other stuff. But uh, I just bring the tube there, and it's very obviously an empty tube. But the people who owned the bar, or the club, or whatever, um, we we asked for their permission. Like, hey, we're going to be bringing this in. Everything's safe. You know, blah blah blah. And they were like, yeah, uh, that's cool. Just don't fire it. And I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> you, you thought this was a, oh, no, 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 no. This is a tube, ma'am. Uh, but they were, so ended up they, were. Gonna, they were just going to send it. They were like, oh, yeah, just, just, yeah, that's fine. Just, you know, keep it on safety. Yeah, they were way cooler than you thought they'd be. They're like, all right, right you know, promise us. We're not only shooting towards windows. Now he got us with the goddamn <laughs> fingers crossed claws. He fired it right <laughs> into, right into the woods. Yeah. What is uh I see all the time and I get such a kick out of you engaging in, in gun debates and everything online, correcting misinformation with all that. What is because you're so close to it, what is the the gun take that gets your goat? more than anything else that when you see mm. you're like these fucking non anti-gun people uh there's a couple there's a lot of misinformation out there but the uh the the big one is it, it seems and it's some of the easiest stuff to correct too uh it seems like uh a lot of the people that are you know spouting anti-gun stuff on on the internet say like there's no reason for a, a civilian to be able to go into a gun store and buy a fully automatic weapon i'm like well that's crazy because you can't that's, that's yeah, not yeah. a lot. Like, do you have an idea? accidental ally? What's up? <laughs> accidental <laughs> ally. Yeah. yeah. Subreddit. It's the, like, uh, you, like uh, the, the hoops you got to jump through. And like Kyle knows, like the, the shit you have to do to have access to this is insane. Um, if you don't have your FFL, it's uh, still like a lot of paperwork and it's very expensive, like prohibitively expensive, like a year's salary for most people. I'm glad you're here because I wanted to ask you about this. <clears throat> this is the coolest I don't, I don't look at guns really that much anymore, but the coolest gun thing I've seen in a long time was uh, a friend of the show. He bought a Mac, and the, then he bought uh, um, a conversion kit so he can put an AR upper on his full yeah. auto transferable Mac. Yeah. And now he's got a fucking real machine gun for like... I, Macs used to be $4,500 when I was looking at them. They're a lot more now. I think yeah. he paid 10 or something. But still, it's like a $10,000 machine gun, like a real one, a fun one. <laughs> and it looks yeah. like shit. <laughs> <laughs> they look they look so fucking awkward but that's the cool part because that's the workaround because you know the lower of it on i guess on i'm assuming on the mac 10s whatever the lowers are considered the firearm or the machine gun so the upper that you put on it's fucking irrelevant it's just like changing the barrel or the muzzle brake it's not the regulated part so you mm -hmm. just put on whatever I, th I think i know who you're talking about the uh the, the company that sells those they're they're mm -hmm. kind of neat i mean i get the premise you want to be able to shoot five five six with ar mags like here you go yeah taylor asked the most frustrating aspect of gun debate Mine is this. When someone says, why do you need that? Right? Like if it's a gun thing, then suddenly I have to justify it. No one ever, ever asks me why I need eight motorcycles. They never ask me why I need hockey equipment mm -hmm. or I don't even know how many sticks I have. No one asks me why I need anything else in my life. But suddenly for guns, even though it's a right to have it, they need me to like describe a scenario where it will come in useful. No, I don't play that game at all. Why do I need it? I, I don't. Or yeah. I'll say zombie apocalypse. I like that one too. Yeah, I know it's kind of a bumper sticker thing, but it's like they don't call it the bill of needs. Like I, I don't need to justify like why the hell I've got it. And plus, I already kind of have it. So what's your plan for making sure I don't anymore? Yeah, it's going to be tough. Look at your background. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's a lot of ways to shut this, that this, down. This shit's my net worth, man. Like I, yeah. I, I, I don't know what you want from me. Oh, wait, there's an RPG on there. Is that rubber? Yeah. That's what we. That's what brought yeah. up the, the army story. So that's it. That one's not rubber, but it's like a Chinese uh, dummy. It's like got all the explosives scraped out, and everything like that. Ah, uh, okay. Another thing I think is funny with the the army or not the army the uh, the gun thing I'll see sometimes is people being like, "Why do you even want an AR-15? Don't you know the government will just murder you where you stand with a drone?" Mm -hmm. and it's like, no. no. Like how how many times has that been gone through when people oh, yeah. understand like insurgencies and like like fighting an armed populace? Like yeah, Maybe. remember how we 
why we dominated Afghanistan so hard. Oh, wait, like, like yeah, it's like Eric Swalwell, the, the senator soldiers on every corner. Like you can't control stuff with 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 just drones and shit, just murdering people like, and, you know, drone operators have families. So, you know, it's, you know, yeah, hey. there's a, a lot of people don't want to harm their fellow citizens and and wouldn't do that. Yeah. I, would, I would hope it's just like Eric hope. Swalwell, like the, the senator, I believe, or congressman who was saying, like, you know, you, you've never beat the U.S. government like we have nukes. I'm like the fact that a representative of the U.S. government has just threatened to nuke its own people are kind of why we want guns. It's kind of a good idea. <laughs> they they like they nuke Montana to show they're serious. We win. <laughs> it's a mushroom cloud and the fallout rain. <laughs> Fuck, it's blowing this way. <laughs> also, like, it, it, Which it, way? Yeah. Weren't you put in the middle of the country? It was yeah. going to blow one way or the other. Now we know the direction of all the wind because of those Canadian fires. Those those irresponsible Canucks mm. up there, they're not watering their, their plants. They're not uh, they're not cleaning up all the sticks the way North uh, botanist Trump recommended. <laughs> you know, they don't have the, the stick sweeping teams that he said would take care of this. So. We need Trump and his sharpie to redefine where the smoke is. If you could there's help too us much out. Fire. I don't want to. I don't want to step over it, but there's too much fire. Like <laughs> it's just like saying something everyone agrees with. Yeah, that that was hilarious. One of one of his best ideas was was sweeping forest floors to prevent you forest know, fires. And then I actually got owned a little bit because I, I read like some forest fire guy who's like, the way he said it was stupid, but he's kind of right. And I'm yeah. like, really? Damn, that sounds so dumb. Yeah, the reason we have these crazy monumental forest fires, um, what well, one of the contributing factors is that we, we have this complete fire prevention. So there are never fires until there are. So the undergrowth builds up, all those dead leaves and pine cones and shit layer after layer of layer of fuel and then one does spark off whether it's lightning or a mm -hmm. psycho who just starts a fire i want robots this is I, where we should send the those dog bots with the flamethrowers dog bots with flame tell me more Zach, show them the dog bot with the <laughs> flamethrower you're gonna love this shit this is yeah. what you're gonna be scared of when the cops like take control and they're taking guns from homes they'll be walking down the street with, with, with a bunch of these dogs they'll go in and they'll be like the seeker destroyers after the spider bots go in and look around and Right, Dude, that, Miller was it. right. And separating moms from babies was a half measure that was never going to work. We needed to drone strike them. <laughs> Is that what he said? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> well, you're going a step too far. Well, that was the video we did with uh, I did a thing where we were mounting. That's that's, that's a Photoshop. There's, that dog could not handle a fucking thing. <laughs> the, uh, we, we put machine guns on the back of the dog, like an MP5 and like a, a KP9, whatever. And uh, yeah, the, the recoil is a little too much in full auto, but a flamethrower now. Flamethrower doesn't have mm. recoil. Well, small ones still don't. It's that out of the box. Yeah, there's a little electric one. Spot in government. Were, were these dogs that you messed with, Brandon, were they pretty impressive or were no. you kind of like, oh, these are actually kind of shit? <laughs> they were so bad. Really? Um, it was, it was, yeah, we, they, there was a constant uh, struggle to get them to not immediately like do a backflip and kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they just parkour to death. It's like fuck. Another two hundred somehow grand. managed to shoot itself, even though it clearly can't. For example, uh, I, feast your eyes on the muzzle climb right now. He is like <laughs> fucking thirty degrees over the berm, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah one, that's gonna be a problem. If uh, the only thing I've ever seen, and I'm, I'm sure there's tons of cool stuff now. But like back in the day when I went to Jerry Baber's place, the guy that has the AA-12s, he had these um, little miniature tanks. They were like like rope. Like they had rubberized treads and they could sort of, you know, they could rotate 360 degrees and, and stuff. And we were just out there with remote controls and he had an AA-12 on that thing upside down. <laughs> so you could just slap the mag straight down into it. And something was weird with the control. So we didn't bother filming it because every time we would shoot, it would just go full auto and dump the whole mag. And then it, and it made it look so janky, but he was like, this is the future boy. This is what will be killing them next year in the next 20 years. That and my drones. And he had these drones that that had machine guns on them. He had, uh, he had AR pistols, like two or maybe four on a drone. He had all sorts of silly shit. He's kind of like Tesla. He was seeing stuff before it was happening. That guy can't be still alive. Nikola the, the Tesla, no, he's dead. No, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry Baber. Oh. The thing that's crazy about the drone stuff, too, is that uh, we were, we were going to do a couple of videos. We were going to do uh, one like the Ukrainian like drones because I've got some got, I got a friend who's you know got a, his FEL and everything. So he's got hand grenades and whatever. But we were going to do the Ukrainian drone drop and we were going to do one where they've got flamethrowers on a drone. I thought for sure that's easier, legally speaking. No, mm -hmm. no. As it turns out, anytime you put anything on a drone, it, as far as like weapons, flamethrowers mm -hmm. or anything like that, the FAA gets really mad. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a $25,000 fine. Did if you ever see Richard out. Ryan's video that he did like a decade ago? No, but I, I've heard you talk about it. He took it down, I think. Um, it, we were, at the time, we had this, um, I, don't, I don't know who was paying us, but some like movie video game company. They, they, we both got contracts, and him doing his drone video was endangering my contract. I was in a field being like, why? Why did he do that? <laughs> He made a drone that drops an explosive that used, I don't think it was LIDAR. It was some, it, it pings the ground as it falls so that it air bursts above the target. Like way more sophisticated than what we're doing, um, they're doing in Ukraine. Um, this is like 10, 12 years ago or something. It sounds like, like a, it was a drone. <laughs> on it was a drone dropped improvised explosive using, I think, plastic explosive and it air detonates at like six or 12 feet or something. Whatever he wants it to, he could program it. It was it was crazy. He took it down, I think. Thank you. And Thank that that got you in trouble, or almost did. They were like, "Oh, we don't know about paying YouTubers <laughs> to make videos now." And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, "No, I'm, please, please." <laughs> meanwhile, I'm in a field with like a bunch of mannequins dressed up as colonial soldiers or something, and an, an old timey cannon. <laughs> yeah. Like, did I shave my head for nothing? Did like, I shave? <laughs> <my head? laughs> I, you I had have shaved a, your head instead of the bald cap. They had a number from me in which I would have shaved my head and they did not meet it. They got <laughs> the bald really? cap number. Yeah. Yeah. When I would pitch things, you know, there'd be tears, right? This gets <laughs> you that. This gets you that. This gets you all of that. And like the the, the final like number was, I, I'll just go ahead and shave. I think I was going to get the tattoo. I think I said, I'll shave the head, get the tattoo for this amount of money. And it, it you know, the hair covers it up. No, oh, it does doesn't. Does he have a tattoo on his head? Yeah, um, well, not on his head, on the back of his neck. The Agent 47 or whatever from the... Um, oh, I remember that. I, my only exposure to those games was your video. I've never Literally me, played. too. They hired me, and I'd never played one before. I had to go play a bunch of fucking video games. Uh, Brandon, I wanted to ask you, because it's it's big news. You you talked about, or talked to, rather, the ATF directly. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. incredible. How did that go, and what, what was the impetus of it? I, I want to know all about it. So I got uh, reached out to to be to participate in a field hearing uh, against the ATF. So uh, basically, they just do that. It, members of Congress will do these field hearings where uh, they ask for expert witness testimony. This in this case, it was like firearm shop owners who'd been shut down, and mm -hmm. you know my goofy ass for some fucking reason. So uh, they they had me come down and talk to that uh, talk to them, and it was uh, uh, your 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 favorite congressman. Uh, it's uh, Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene. We're, we're there um, for Good the test. Ones. Yeah, the testimony. Two winners. Oh. oh, yeah. You know what? I'll take my friends where I can fucking get them, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you, you yeah. got to be looking for allies in that room. You're like, Lindsey Graham, whatever, man. Sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> hop on board. But it's like, you know what? Way. There's there's a lot of stuff about, you know, certain things that they've done that, you know, just very performative, it, you know. And was it Marjorie? But, you know, but, was it her who had the campaign ad of her tanner riding a car? That sounds like something she would like do. It was Lauren either her Bobert? or or Lauren, or Lauren Boebert. Like one of them for sure tannerized a car with a Barrett. <laughs> and a now, Lauren Boebert is, is much better. She's much more attractive. It's it's insane to be. Yeah. Well, first of all, Lauren Boebert can get it. Yeah. Uh, but the <laughs> it was funny. The people on Twitter saying like, as a brown man, Mr. Herrera, how did uh, Miss Green treat you? I'm like. Like a normal fucking person. Like what the fuck? Like just it's kind of funny. Like how much the the propaganda. Like we were told that she hates all Mexicans, and they, you know, she won't even well, make she did eye talk contact. with her hands a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she did not, that's it was Marjorie like, Taylor Green, Kyle. You were right. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So they 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 were asking you if if she hated you because. You have like a your Mexican parent, like yeah, like she she was asking if like they were they were asking like how did she treat you like. Like, like a normal fucking person. What, well, what she asked there? for landscaping tips. <laughs> <laughs> she, she asked what my availability was on Thursday. Um, the, yeah. the route getting the 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 yard's getting a little rowdy. She she snapped at me when she wanted my mm -hmm. attention. She snapped at me. Can you imagine how rude that would be? She thought snapped I was the green room person at first. You know. It, yeah. Hmm. It didn't help because you kept answering like C. Yes, Miss Green. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> No, like, <laughs> yeah, I like God. I am a, I am a huge fan of God. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, Mister Gates, no is here. <laughs> it's no is here. So that was. Were you intimidated at all talking to those those big wigs? 
Um, a little bit. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Uh, it was a prepared statement. So really it was just like, okay, can you read without read for five minutes without fucking it up and then answer a couple of questions? So it wasn't too bad. It was, it was, it was pretty neat though. It's neat to have the opportunity to do something kind of more official like that instead of just bitching yeah. on the internet. Well, you're doing more than rounding up to a hundred percent of people like protecting gun rights. So hell yeah. Two yeah, thumbs up there. To. When you give blood, your body has to reproduce all those red blood cells, right? Yeah. How much energy does that take? I, I wish it took said more. This before it's it's not as much as you think. It's like in the hundreds of calories, not in the thousands. You're also not, you're know. not taking much blood out. I think when you when you give blood, you like blood. Okay, well that's not nothing. Yeah, that's a lot. That's, yeah. Okay. I, like, like ten percent of my blood, or some five. I don't know, fifteen. Well, because because I was always thinking because I, I, you know, through uh, like the Americ and whatnot, doing like the really nice like blood panels and shit like that. Before I thought like, oh my god, like seventeen vials of blood, like that's so much fucking blood. And then I look up how much is in your body. I'm like, oh, I'm a bitch. Like this is all in my head. I, yeah, when you do I get I get fucking faint when things. they take it. When, like I had mm. never given that the Merrick panels, like he's talking about. They need a vial for everything. And it's you've been sitting there for, for like 15, 20 seconds, and he's been pulling and popping these vials out of your arm. Like he, the needle's stuck in your arm, and he keeps sticking vials to it. And when he sticks it to it, the blood audibly makes a, a hissy, um, like splash noise against the other side of the, um, the, 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 the vial. And yeah. he, I can just hear, pss, hmm, pss, I'm like, dude, how many are you getting? Because I didn't know. And he's like, eight or 12 or something like that. It was crazy. And I was like, Pfft. All right, I'm 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 gonna go. I'm I might pass out. I might pass out. Yeah, I just had blood done like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. And I also just said, "Fuck it," throw in a lead test in there too, because I'm curious. Because I shoot a lot, and I shoot a lot suppressed too. Oh. All that aerosolized lead, you know, oh. lead all over everything, and you know, I'm just curious to see what my numbers are at. Would and, that go uh, away over time? I think yeah, and I think there's some stuff you can take that kind of bonds with it or whatever that you can kind of like you know use your lead wipes and everything, and like you you, you can get better. So were you um, ready? I just so remember it was supposed to take five days and it's been two and a half weeks. And I finally called them yesterday and they were like, oh, yeah, uh, we we got a bad draw or whatever. And I'm just hoping that that doesn't mean that like, yeah, we got results back. But it was we, we were surprised like who was somebody with lead this high couldn't have walked into the building. <laughs> so like it's clearly this oh, is no. right. So I'm going to get that redrawn and hopefully, you know, my kids aren't I might, cripplingly retarded. I might add that to um, I remember uh, two incidents one just dumping like a giant belt out of a suppressed um 300 blackout saw yeah and it's just all going into my face but we were shooting for g4 or whatever that, that stupid like gaming tv mm -hmm. channel and we had to do this all in one rip and i couldn't stop and so it just fed that shit into my face for the whole belt and tears were pouring down my face when i turned around because it's just going into my eyes yeah. that wasn't good but then i mostly escaped this one but when i was making that bowling ball mortar the base of it needs to be heavy. And so we poured a lot of molten lead into the base of that upturned acetylene tank. And, you know, the other ends chopped off to make the, the mortar. Mm. And we had this big kettle of molten lead cooking on a propane cooker. And somebody had to pour it in. <laughs> and when you pour it in, it goes, whoosh, and all that, that, that gas and vapor and, I don't know, lead goo is just coming out and i was like oh god this might be the most dangerous thing we've actually ever done yeah. jeremy <laughs> <laughs> we uh jeremy, come here a minute <laughs> we did one earlier this year and it still hasn't fucking come out yet because we're just you know sometimes shit at that but uh we we shot ten thousand rounds from an ak in one day which is way harder than it sounds because it is just so fucking tedious because we're also like so we're getting the obviously the lead exposure shooting 10,000 rounds in one day and it was all me. So like my shoulder was destroyed. Why? But uh, we were, you know, full auto just doing -da -da -da, just mag after mag after mag. And hmm. then after like three, 400 rounds a piece, we would dunk it. So now you're getting the water that's taking that, you know, lead with it that's aerosolizing yeah. and everything. And then it started getting later in the day. So we were worried about, you know, the neighboring properties and such. So we added a suppressor. Now that's getting dunked and blowing all that lead and shit back in your face. And after that, like I remember blowing my nose and it was black. Fuck, and I'm like, a respirator for that. I really should have. You know, that was one of those like, you know, you, you know, Monday morning quarterback. I'm like, fuck, I should have done that. Because like my jacket, too, was covered in soot, like and just all sorts of nasty shit. So I I'm did like, 5, yeah, I'm curious. I did 5,000 rounds through a minigun with no air pro. 
Oh Christ! Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why, dude? <laughs> Did you forget him? Yeah, and once you start shooting, you know it's a dollar a round. <laughs> <laughs> you can't stop halfway. We're filming. <laughs> yeah. I linked that shit up, dude. I wasn't gonna stop. <laughs> oh God, dude! I've done that you accidentally linked, with well, fifty I was about cows. To ask if you'd but... ever. I was about to ask if you ever linked 5,000 rounds, but yeah, you have. I bet your mag reloads got better after 10,000 rounds. <laughs> What's funny is I was doing the, the the quick reloads where you just take the, the magazine and just hit them yeah. on the back, right? Uh, the rocking forward of the magazine apparently was hitting the handguard, and it happened so much that it carved a rut in the front lower handguard cool. because it just the metal magazine kept smacking it. I was wondering, I'm like, what the fuck was hitting here? And then I realized it. it was just the reloads. AK worked after 10,000. What was the accuracy like? Uh, we didn't do an accuracy test after that. We still can. Uh, I still have the gun. I'd love it was, to know. It's fine. We we ended up calling it at like 6,900. Nice. But we, wow. uh, <laughs> oh God, I'm spoiling this video. Whatever the fuck. Uh, it, whatever. But oh, we, I didn't know it was like, I thought it, I didn't know it was brand new. No, no, we haven't, we haven't released it yet. But yeah, we, we, we called it. No, don't spoil a while. Thing. Go watch this video to find out what happens. I don't know when this fucking thing's coming out, dude. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a good video. And we, uh, well, it should be a good video anyway, but. It, uh, I, I think it was just, it was just getting too hot and we were just, it, it would have kept going. Like we ran it through an ultrasonic and like it runs fine now, but I said, hmm. I'm, I bet you've done something like this before, but I set out to shoot that tree down one time with a 12 gauge hmm. and then quickly realized that I'd set out to do something really hard. <laughs> and it was, it just, it's like, man, I really have gotten ahead of myself. I, I'm, I'm, I'm 200 rounds in and man, this hurts. This hurts so, and I got two guys loading mags behind me, and it's 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 going as fast as I can, and it doesn't matter. It's just pounding the shit out of me, especially that piece of shit I was shooting. What what was it, if you remember? Oh, it was this semi-automatic mag-fed shotgun that kind of looked like a like an old school M16 with oh, so like the MK1919 or something. That's exactly like that. what it is. Yep. Yeah, I had the the I I don't know if they. They were custom made because they had like fucking laser engraving on them, but these 10 round mags for it. Mm. And uh, I ended up painting it like, like all DeWalt co colors. So it looked like a fucking DeWalt uh, screw gun. Yeah. That's kind of How about this, yeah, Brandon? <clears throat> you can't be into guns anymore, but you still have to be a weapon guy. What do you pivot to? Ooh, uh, guns as in like legal definition of firearm? Or firearms. Okay. You can't use firearms anymore, not even flintlock. Ah, damn, because I was going to go black powder because black powder is kind of fun. Nope. Um, cannons, cannons work. Those are kind of cool. There's, that's fuck. No, um, I would have, I, I mean, archery, like the nice, like three, the, like the $3,000 bows and shit like that. I don't have any skill in them, but I've shot them before, like buddies and whatnot. And they're, uh, okay. shot buddies, bows, not shot buddies with them, but they're, uh, they're, they're pretty fun. I, I would probably get into that. Those are kind of neat. Um, air guns are crazy, air guns are wild. Still a gun, yeah. Oh no, you you, you get around to everything like flintlock. Not this it, fucking question I made up. Like, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. There are some wild, some wild air guns. I don't know what the cutting edge of that shit is, but just it like shoots through the years. I remember seeing that thing that shot arrows. That, yeah. that, is that what they're allowed to have in? Um, did we talk to Finn about that? That he can have air guns. They do a lot the of UK. air guns over there. You can have Finn's rich enough to have real guns, but. In, in the UK, but well, even uh, then, I don't. They they're kind of limited, to like shotguns and hunting rifles, right? I don't think rules and restrictions. I think over there, like there's it, the something that people don't realize is in any country, pretty much, if you have enough money and connections, you can get whatever you want. You're just gonna yeah. have to pay out the ass for it, like because they just like like when they film movies in the UK, those prop houses are using real guns a lot of the time. They're real machine guns that are like blank adapted and whatnot. But, you know, there's some license that has to exist to let that, you know, be owned. Yeah, because there's an industry for it. Like, there's, exactly. a, there's a proper reason to, to possess those things. Yeah. Um, and, and then I, I'm sure there's all sorts of antiquity laws and, uh, and collection um, clauses and such over there so that rich folks can just have their fancy shotguns. I, I mean, they have that fox hunt all the time. Where, where are those guys getting their guns? They're just, yeah, you're right. I, I imagine fox hunting is for very rich people, right? I would I would imagine that's how it's always been uh, dis displayed because I see those people trying to like break the fox hunt up for the good of the fox. Yes, I do. Kind of. I don't like when you have an animal captured and then we're gonna let <laughs> <laughs> that fox is a notorious rapist. <laughs> he's, he's, he's known uh, across the fox world. He's he a can't keep getting away with it. 
He's the fucking Harvey Foxstein. He's he's abusing all of these of these foxes. Why would you want to kill a Jewish fox? Oh God! Well, he's a he's a a, a molester fox. Oh, look at you with your with your affirmative action now. Looking at <laughs> looking at the non-action, huh? Yeah, I don't care for that. No, I think uh, foxes are fine to be killed. They, what do they add to the? What do they bring to the table? They're cute as fuck. I mean, they're cute. Yeah, they're like little little. Squeaky dogs. I don't think I the foxes the- they're killing are that cute though. They're kind of ugly foxes, like right? Mangy, they're they're, they're, they're pretty the orange mangy. foxes, aren't they? Don't they like? Don't, isn't it a trophy to be had once it once it's over? Okay, well if that's what they're doing. I don't really like it because they're not eating it, right? Really, I guess that's no, my, nobody eats fox. I know, but that's my actual opinion on hunting. Is like I don't give a fuck as long as you're eating it. But when you mm. when you stop eating it, it's kind of like. You have uh, to. Eat I'll, make, I'll make an exception to, to hogs, like because hogs, especially out here, uh, those are a problem. Like yeah, those, are, those are con- like could you eat them if you wanted? Yeah, and I have. Like I've done, like I've done the fox hunt, or this, not the fox, excuse me, the the hog hunts, where like you you run dogs, but you kill them with a fucking knife, so you actually have yeah. to like pin this thing fucking down, like stab it in the heart. But uh, out here we do like night vision shit and whatnot, like just middle of the night, just go out and just it's like pest control for because these pigs will fuck up, they'll fuck up. Uh, like oh, crops, yeah. livestock. If they get into like neighborhoods, they'll gore dogs. Like it's pretty rough. Yep. Out here. Mm-hmm. I OJ yeah. Simpson to hog to over those. in Houston one night. Yeah, you got away with it. Yeah, yeah, I did get away with it. I saw yeah. it head off with a pocket knife. I jumped on its back. Fuck, Super dude. hardcore. Yeah, it's its head off with a pocket knife. You're there for two hours. Yeah. No, I didn't take long. I like stabbed it up first. It'd been shot in the leg. To be fair, I had to, so we catch it. Yeah. You were hacking yeah. at like a, a hog spine with a. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't trying to take its head off. I was trying. I, I saw it from oh. the bottom up until you know all that was gone because I didn't know how to kill it, and I was afraid it was gonna. It already it bit me on the uh, like inner thigh, okay. and uh, and when I took my back. pants off later, like a little bit, but I had this massive black and blue bruise where it like chomped down on me. This guy was being a bitch. He was the one there to make a video. He was making his gator show shit, and he. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know what, man? You know what gator would do in a situation like this? He wouldn't use no gun. Gator could go in there hand to hand, hand to snout <laughs> and at first he was down but then as soon as the thing made a noise and sort of like charged a little and, went, and he was like fuck this so he he noped out it was lame that was that a fun lame. video though good for you for being brave murdering mm-hmm. that yeah how big was the knife it was not big enough oh god yeah it was not big enough it was like i don't know three or four inch blade i'm pretty like sure knife. I- Pretty sure I could tell this story. So when we went, when we went, it was me, um, Donut, and Scott from Kentucky Ballistics. We all went down uh, to do the same like knife hunt. And uh, when I got mine, you know, I got it was like two hundred fifty pounder or something like that, two hundred fifty, mm-hmm. three hundred pounds, something like that. So stabbed it, it died pretty quick. Like because if you you get right in the heart, like under the armpit, uh, it, it's that nice, good red, chunky blood. You can tell you get that arterial blood. So mm-hmm. like it bleeds out very quick and it's, you know, it's relatively speaking when you're talking about hunting, like pretty quick way to kill the animal. Yeah. Cody, <laughs> when he got to his, um, yeah, see, it was a big motherfucker. This was like an angry one that they were like, oh yeah, that one. I'm glad we're killing that one. That dude's a piece of shit. Like he's an angry nickname. Old man. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, the, the guys who were running like the reserve or whatever, like knew that one. They fucking hated him. Like he had taken a shotgun. El Diablo. Yeah, like they, they found, there was buckshot in his fucking shoulder and those little armor pads when the they scarred came. veteran oh, shit, took it apart. But uh, yeah, he jumped on there and went to stab it. And I'm recording him too because like for for his video stuff, and he just keeps stabbing it in the same place. And the knife is just barely not long enough to get to the heart. Mm. So after like a minute, <laughs> oh. just him like stabbing this thing, it's squealing. There's blood everywhere. I'm just like with the camera like. Okay. It's like like, yeah. like a you sharpened. That's this, what man. Scott did. That's what Scott did with my camera. That I, I I'm still mad about it. <laughs> so he like he like prison shanked him like like 15 quick stabs with a shell. Oh, knife. it was way more than 15. Like he was trying sitting there trying to twist and find like something that would bleed. Eventually the fucker died, but like it was yeah. it took a it took a little minute. This guy thousand cuts. Quite too angry to die. To yeah, I I, uh, I didn't know they did that. that that's pretty cool. I, I've heard of people using lances, and I always pictured like a pretty, like a really cool modern spear, like an eight foot, six foot spear. But going in with a knife is even cooler. Although, I usually knives that are meant to, I don't know, kill a pig are what you would think of as like, um, what do you call that shit that like mall cops use, like like Never ninja. Spray. 
like that mall. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like the cat, like 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 mall ninja shit. Uh, yeah. You know, like like like, but you'd actually want a knife that was meant to like stab, like a dagger or something. I guess. Yeah, it was a big ass oh, Bowie knife. Like, you know, maybe. Oh well, maybe never mind. Long. Jesus Christ. You know what you could use for <laughs> the things is uh get one of those shark knives. Where you stab oh. and then you hit the button and it like oh, kills yeah. the right CO two or whatever. Yeah, you could probably kill the hog very humanely with that. <laughs> or it would just be <laughs> messy as fuck. Yeah. You just put it in, ring it, <laughs> it just fucking just sprays just everywhere, explode. just chunks of pig. Have you ever used hand riding hogs? No, but I fucking want to. Yeah, so make I've... just you know don't film that part though because you get you know, you'd want to spice it up a little bit for them, um, right. and, and and then you you know break some rules and stuff or maybe but um but then you can make it real effective against them i've heard stories of people having a food trough that the, they've been regularly going to and then one night that rope that's strung across isn't a rope anymore it's deck cord that <laughs> rope that they've been sticking their heads up under and it's yeah. on the back of all of their necks down a line is deck cord and they that's rad that's, uh, that's heard a, of um a pretty good um, idea you know how you know when you buy barbed wire how it comes in a big spool with a hollow yeah. center that's all I have to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> <That's all> I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at, at what point we had one of those spools of uh, of deck cord that we we ran out. We were doing like a demo course or whatever, and we just sh just blew up five hundred meters of a deck cord in a straight line, just to see what would happen. You can and see it. As it turns out, what happens is you set a lot of grass on fire. <laughs> <laughs> that was. Um, yeah, we had to do a lot of stuff. How, how much does that debt cord actually explode? Like, if how how close would you have to be standing next to the cord exploding to get hurt? So we we were mm -hmm, okay. I, yeah, I'd probably say this. We were taking bets, um, <laughs> saying that if you had like a good cup or something like that, and the debt cord is laid out on the ground, if you stood over it like an arch like that, you'd, you'd be fine. probably be okay. Oh, I agree with that. It's that. I agree with that. It's that, like not strong. Like it would probably be well, stopped see, by a plastic cup. So what? What it really is is it's it's like an ignition charge for other explosives. So if you're putting like C10, data sheet, C4, uh, comp B, whatever the fuck, uh, you know, pick your poison. It blasting or the debt cord explodes at such a velocity that it will set off other high grade explosives. So people use it a lot for that, but it will fuck you up. Like if you're holding debt cord while it goes off, your hand is gone. You can wrap it around and around a thing. You want to cut in half. Yeah. It really needs contact with something. I mean, it doesn't need it, but like that'll make it work. Okay. So but out on the ground, it, it would provide this really cool visual effect where it burns at some obscene speed. Like some. But if you weren't touching it and you're like holding your hands like this, like a foot away, it wouldn't burn you or anything. No, not burn yeah. you. It, it's going to spray gravel at you, but not a, not at a speed that's going to go through you or anything. It's, it's not as scary like, as I thought it was. It's not going to kill yeah. you. Um, well, you small doses, and it comes in different. You can get some that's it'll be itty bitty, and then you get um, the biggest debt cord is those mine clearing charges that they shoot across. Right, it's this big rope of of shit. <laughs> I, I, they're filling up um, like old tanks, like T thirty fours, I think, with that shit, like a hundred meters of that shit. That's this big. It's like think the velvet rope at the movies, but debt cord. And they, they and then they like send it toward the Ukrainian lines on as, as like a drone, not as a drone, but just go that way, rig it up. And then it's a colossal explosion whenever it goes just off. The debt, the, just the debt cord would blow it up? Because the, the whole thing is, it's so, again, it's it's like velvet rope big. It's so yeah. much explosive. And they didn't just put a little in there. They put as much as a tank was physically capable of holding, along with like bombs, like actual bomb bombs. Oh, okay. And then I saw one go off and it looked like, you could tell it was it was different. It was a different kind of explosion. The shock wave would have a good use of ruined a anybody within 100 meters. It's like 10 or 20 feet either side. The dirt is just noticeably disturbed. Or the sound, like, rather. I feel like that's a waste of a tank. Like, you could do that in a Chevy. You could do that in a van. <laughs> you could do, like, the tank. Don't you waste a, a tank with on it. that. No, you Take stop your a Chevy box. with small arms. Yeah. You stop a Chevy with small arms, and then if you rig a Chevy to go straight in a field, you know, it goes off, it gets stuck. A tank will just go through anything, and they can't stop it unless they hit it with an anti tank weapon. Stop a Chevy with big arms. It, you can you stop a Ford with no weapons at all. It just stops occasionally. Yeah. Decor uh, does. 
No, no, I was joking about Ford. Like my Raptor, my motor just blew up randomly one day. That was really. Oh cool. no, the six O twin turbo thing. Yeah, it was. I had. Or, a, I was. It was only like sixty thousand miles on this damn thing, and I was like, and I was actually on my way back from drive tanks in Uvalde, and uh, yeah, I was in the middle of fucking nowhere uh, on that highway, like. <laughs> like an hour from civilization and my motor just took a shit on me well at least it's not a super nice car yeah it was it was like an hour from it yeah i had to (laughs) i just sat and like fucking reclined my seat and waited to be picked up and just like okay i guess i'll catch up on narcos catch up on narcos (laughs) (laughs) that sucks though what was wrong with it uh through through a cylinder or some shit like that uh i had to get the entire motor replaced yeah warranty nope what does How that much? cost? Let's guess. Hang on. We guess. Ooh. We guess on these. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to count installation. Did you get it down at a dealership? Yeah. Yeah. Dealership took care of all of it. Nothing was covered. So it was all out of Okay. Pocket. I'm going to call this $75,000 truck. I, I, I think this may have cost shit. A new engine. $10,000. I'm going to say $10,000. I'm going to say 10000 I want to say twelve. 000. I was going to say 12500 it was almost Shit. on the dot at like 12 13. Okay. Yeah. yeah which actually, yeah. believe it or not, was less than this I thought. This is what be. he stole my answer. That's what I was going I to say. I saw it. <laughs> it, <laughs> dude, That's what I'm going to do on the show now. Like, every, like, you remember those kids in school who'd be like, I was going to say that. Like, <laughs> they, like, it's just like, anytime someone says something right, I saw you stole that. Raptor's cool, though. It's neat. They get broken into so much because they, uh, yeah. The, the door issue and whatnot, and especially around San Antonio, like in <clears throat> Texas, uh, like you don't have a problem really with, you know, break ins or muggings or anything because everybody here's got a fucking gun. Like, you know, if you break into a house, there's probably a gun. Mm-hmm. Um, but the vehicular crime, especially in the nicer like mall parking lots and stuff like that, like the vehicular crime is insane. You, you should choose your have... victim based on if they're liberal, like just Subaru Outbacks exclusively. <laughs> well, well, the problem with the Raptors is they they think like the, the person's gone and there's probably a gun in it, which I don't leave guns in my fucking cars for that exact reason. But yeah, yeah, it's it's they get a lot of guns, man. They yeah, get a lot I've of heard guns that cashed. if you put like Glock or Sig Sauer stickers on your car or something, that that's just an advertisement that there's expensive yep. toys in here. I yeah, know I when I see that like that thing on the back of the car with like a bunch of little <laughs> kids, I know. I know. I just Easy follow them pickings. back home. Easy <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get all their games. I'm gonna steal all their 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 consoles, juice boxes, yeah. and shit. Gushers, fruit by the foot. That shit. There's, like, there's like six kids on that bumper sticker. Do you know how many iPads? Said? If I see a bumper sticker with like four or five kids, I know that mom puts out. Mm. You yep. know, yeah. <laughs> I've been stopped by police plenty of times when I had a gun on my person or in my vehicle, and never one of those times did I say, "Hey, do you want to see a gun?" <laughs> <laughs> you want to see a real cool gun? It's got tiger stripes on it. Check out the barrel. It's got a. Fight. Mark, do you want a party before you go to bed? <laughs> 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 Hands on the steering wheel the whole fucking time. Like, yeah, yes, yeah. sir. No, sir. Yep. All right. I but you have those- eye contact. I've Even done all that boys. and still got chastised by a cop. So in my concealed carry course, they told us not to tell the cop you have a gun. I have a gun as a thing that could make a cop on They hand. told you that? What they told us to do instead was to hand your concealed carry license with the driver's license. That, that that was your method of saying I have a gun. Then you answer any questions about it. And uh, this cop did not like that at all. He thought I was hiding or something. Like who hands over a concealed carry license as a method of hiding it? You know. But yeah. uh, guess where it is, copper. <laughs> <laughs> Riddle me that. You know? <laughs> but yeah, you chastised me, and I, I was trying to explain to him this is how they told us to do it in the concealed carry course, and. He said, yeah, I, I don't basically he speaking on behalf of all police. That is not what you do. You tell the cop that I have a gun. Yeah. I mean, I, see, see, I, I don't know what's it, right. That's, that's a situation where I become a smart ass, though. Like, like we got pulled over that time in Florida. Um, you know, I, I had like brand new tags on the SUV I was in. I just bought it. And uh, it was me and my cousin Scott and this girl that I was returning to her house. And the car was full of guns. I mean, like like seven ARs and eight handguns or something like that. A couple thousand mm-hmm. rounds of ammunition. And uh, they shine the lights in, they see it, and the guy goes, guns! <laughs> and they're like, all right, everybody step out of the vehicle, and they, they're running all the guns and everything, and they're running the car's registration and our IDs and our backgrounds. And finally, it comes to the conclusion that everything here is A-OK, and they're like, you really shouldn't. You, you can't ride around with your guns in there like that. I'm like, am I breaking any laws? They're like, well, no. I'm like, well, I think I'll put them wherever I want then. 
Like, like I like my handguns rolling around on the floorboard in the back. I, that's how I like them. I, I like my AR stacked up five deep in the trunk. Like, that's how I like my AR stack. I should close like, my eye, put a hand where the passenger's feet go, and find at least two. That, that's, that was the situation, 100%. And, and it was, <laughs> it, more so because Scott was in the back seat, and when we got pulled over, he didn't like the fact that there were guns, like, stuck between the seats, like, like almost in a drawable position. So he started pulling them out of there and pushing them as far away from himself as he could, which meant the floorboards were full of handguns. Mm. And then he's just sitting there like this. Like, 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 like terrified. He never does well under those situations, under the, mm. under the bright lights of police flashlights. Huh. Um, so, so, but I was just like, no, nah, if I'm not breaking any laws, that's where they're going to stay. I don't, I don't, I don't, mm. I don't have any kids in here. Like I like having piles of handguns rolling around. So I'm like the same way. Like I, I, I used to like to keep just, I had, you know, rifles all in the back, you know, three or four AKs, whatever. I usually I'm transporting them to from the range. We're doing filming, whatever. And uh, turns out you can't do that in South Carolina. And I realized that now because I was held at gunpoint by police for about 10 minutes mm -hmm. uh, at a traffic stop at one point uh, because I got pulled over. I don't even know what I was doing. I don't know yeah, if speeding, but I was like, uh, I was in the middle of fuck nowhere, South Carolina. And uh, I get pulled over by Officer Tren. Mm -hmm. And he just like jacked <laughs> fucking 55 year old. And he. I'm like, yep, yeah, yes, sir. Like, I do have, I have a concealed carry permit. Yes, I am carrying. I do have guns in the vehicle. Like, being as compliant as possible. Yeah. And he sees puppy. And he sees uh, my, uh, he sees one of the guns, I guess, at the floorboard. And immediately draws down and he's pointing the gun at my fucking neck. And he's like, Jeez. don't fucking move. You Whatever. Take, I have my license in my, my wallet, my hand. He's like, put your hands on the ceiling. So I'm like, got my hands on the ceiling, whole nine yards. He's like. I'm waiting for backup to come. I've got I've got three or four units on the way, blah, 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 and all this shit. And he's like, you make one fucking move. And he's saying all the bad lines. And I'm like trying to joke with him to cool him down because it was like 10 minutes. I was at gunpoint with just this dude. <laughs> he's saying all the lines he's like, I don't know who the fuck you are, but I'm going home to my family. I'm like, you know what? I would love that. That would be awesome. You're not like, no, you're not. <laughs> we'll see about we that. Know what's coming. You I'll don't know you. who you pulled over, sir. Like, <laughs> oh, you only sent for three? I sent for ten. <laughs> <laughs> but like I, I was making jokes and shit because I'm just like, well, I appreciate your trigger discipline. Uh like I <laughs> he's just trying to cool the guy down, like, hey, I'm I'm not a shithead. Like I just I'm trying to go visit my parents. But yeah, the uh it, a couple officers did show up and they they kind of like figured out what the fuck just happened. I was kind of like, Yeah, homeboy, is he okay? Like, is he everything okay at home? Well, blah blah blah. And they're like, Well, technically, yes, you know, you were violating state law. Which well, his whole family play? died in a fire three years ago. And it's like, oh no. He was his crazy whole family, the whole time. <laughs> his whole family had just died in a gunfight yesterday. <laughs> no, but, he, uh, but apparently they had, uh, like, you know, apparently it was against the law the way I was transporting. I was unaware of that. It was perfectly legal in North Carolina. I just crossed state mm -hmm. lines. And uh, they're like, yeah, but uh, I, I kind of could hear it in their voice. It's like, homie should not have pulled his gun on you and kept you at gunpoint this whole time. So we're very sorry. Please get on your way. So I'm like, yeah. all right, well, at least that's cool. I'll take it. So they acted yeah, like ridiculous. he was the he was kind of the spurg of the group. I bet like when they got the call from like Officer Trend, they're like, oh, another guy's being held at gunpoint. We got to go. Let, let's hurry up. Let's, let's hope he's alive like, when we get there. Oh fuck! Yeah, like the no, that's the third one this week. Oh, and his name's Herrera. <laughs> fuck! Oh, I'm going. I'm going back home to my family. Oh, I'm sure you miss your wife Samantha and your daughter Jessica. And oh, just like, trying, trying to, like taking a guess on this, <laughs> your head blown off. I was doing a bit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not very funny, but common sense tells me all the time. I'm sorry. Yeah, they can be super jumpy. I, I, I and I get it to some extent, but, mm -hmm. but, but, like I had, um, I think I was in Oregon, got pulled over by a female trooper, and, uh, and I told her she asked for my registration or insurance card. I don't remember which, but it was in my glove box, and I was like, my handgun's in there, just so you know. I've got a lot of guns in the car. I was, I was like, I was like, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't even. She's like, how many? I'm like. I don't know. I don't like keep a proper count somewhere between 12 and 15. I, maybe I, I really don't know. She, she, um, but, but yeah, my handguns in the glove box with my registration, I'm going to have to reach right next to a gun to give you that. She's like, that's fine. I got one too. Yeah. Like, like just give, gave no fucks. Like she got it. Like, you know, I, that that's, that's the kind of calm demeanor that I like appreciate mm -hmm. from my cop. Like, like, right. like, like she I was definitely. real chill about it. 
I like, find the disclosure is usually the the key because like I find that cops like usually are super chill, especially like, small town southern cops. They're like, as soon as you tell them, they usually have that canned line like, "Well, as long as you don't touch yours, I won't touch mine." Sure. Yeah. It's super chill. Yeah, yeah absolutely. One. Yeah, it's uh, um, all the times I've had real issues with that. I was away from home, like, and it was like uh, Georgia State Patrol or uh, or something like that. Because like when I was driving to Florida that time, and I had the gun and slap full of cars again that looked funny. I had $30,000 in my passenger seat because I was going to buy a boat and I had like the car was brand new with like stickers on it again, different car. 30 grand in cash, 12 guns. <laughs> yeah. And, and I had some scary shit in the back. I think I might have had a M249 in my trunk or something. And, um, and so, yeah, they What's were that? just like, it's a belt fed machine gun, a saw. Very cool. Um, and so they were just like, a pro, uh, what happened was a, a trucker called in and said that I was waving a pistol at, while I was driving through traffic. Which, were you? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had my pistol. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. I was wait, and, and I'm just like, there is, I, I'm, in my head, I'm thinking like, did I do anything that could even be, per be perceived that way? Like, did I wave my hand? Did I like fart and I'm like waving it out the window or something? Like, like what happened here? Like, no, none of that happened. But there was a nine millimeter sitting flat in the passenger seat. And that's what he saw. He saw a gun in a car seat down below him and he called the cops on me. And they all showed up with hands on pistols, not drawn, but maybe they were drawn. I don't remember. I, I remember there were hands on guns, though. And, uh, and it was just like, we can call the we can call the dog or you can just let us search. And I'm like. I don't want a dog scratching my new car. They fucking search. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got nothing to hide. The funny part is Karen's like that, who will do their part to end gun violence and call, you know, report this guy who's got a gun and has police go show up and kill somebody. Yo. Hmm. Yeah, often. Yeah. Task failed successfully. Well, one more gun owner off the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Probably what Karen would think. You know, he was just going <laughs> to shoot somebody with it anyway. He's just going to murder someone. Yeah, that shit's annoying. So I was, uh, I was watching your. I, I really enjoyed. By the way, I watched a couple. I saw a couple more though. The AR guy versus AK guy. It's like watching. Sorry to hear that. It's like getting really into a a subreddit on a niche hobby that you don't get yet. And like after you get to like page three, you're like, <laughs> I get the jokes. Like, right. Like I, I get what's happening. Like I watched the first episode and I'm like, okay, I get it. So like AR guys wear scarves and like talk about stats and AK guys are like, let's go shoot things for cheap and have fun. And like, this was just total impulse purchase. Like thought I was, I, I just started looking right after watching that video. I'm like, what kind of AK could I buy if I really want an AK? And so I wanted to ask you, I don't have an AK. If I, I wanted to that. buy one, if I wanted to buy one, what, what kind, where do I look? Treat it like I don't know a thing. So American stuff is usually pretty shit. Like uh, American, not American built stuff, but like American, fully made here they cut a lot of corners corners they do a lot of casting a lot of just really dog shit manufacturing because they're like oh it's cheap russian shit whatever mm -hmm. the russians and the soviets took that shit very seriously like they have very high end like forgings and it's very strong metal and everything and not getting too technical like a lot of the overseas stuff like arsenal very good brand arsenal bulgaria saigas all the russian shits really really good then you get american shit which is like oh it'll detonate after two thousand rounds if you're using hot ammo it's like yeah that's that's not awesome. That's been, oh, I good. bought an American good AK. I didn't know any better. Oh, and, dude, I, I was like, ooh, it's an AK, but it's American. So, it, you know, it, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like double better. good. No, it, it's more <laughs> like multiplying two negatives or something. I don't know. It, 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 I think I fucked that up. Uh, let's say it's not like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was just say that multiplying two negatives. <laughs> I would these students, so you're not my <laughs> maybe, maybe the Americans are positive, so, dude. So I don't know. One negative. But <laughs> in any case, it uh, it sucks. It, it it jammed all the time. I think I asked Kyle to look at it. He didn't have a solution. I'm not sure about that. I definitely took it to a, a gun store and was like, "Hey, this is like, do you want it as a trade-in? I hate this gun." And they're like, "No, no." You're we, an excellent salesman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I didn't. Yeah, good point. So anyway, uh, my gun sucks. They they suggested removing some piece of rubber to make it maybe maybe it better. Oh no, you Same. have an IO. I do. Yeah, I think so. Oh, no, honey, <laughs> is that a really <laughs> tough one to have? 
awful. I've actually toured their facility and they threatened to sue me after the video I made. Really? Uh, <laughs> one, of, one of my earliest videos on YouTube is just awful, awful. Is there awful. any way to make it not misfire? Uh, I can, you can send it to me. I can completely demill it and replace all of the parts and rebuild it. And then it might work. <laughs> so he'll make you a new gun and send that new gun back. We can probably save like the furniture. And the trigger <laughs> oh, group. I don't like the furniture. I don't well, like the furniture. We can definitely save the trigger group and the screw. The Kyle gave, gave me better trigger. furniture and I decided that the AK wasn't worthy of the furniture. The furniture is like the wooden part for anyone who doesn't know yeah. guns. And uh, I was like, man, I really like this. It's like, it's almost reddish purple. or I don't know, really appealed to my sense of style. I thought it was cool. But I'm like, this gun is not worthy of this outfit. You can't yeah. have it. Yeah, I never got, got too much into AKs. Whenever we would buy AKs, it was always to convert them to full auto. So I just buy the cheapest Wasser 10 I could find and yeah. uh, and make a machine gun out of it. And But back, I mean, I never had an that those Wasser 10s would just go and go and go. I never had any issues with you them. You guys have me hoping for a Biden gun buyback program. Right? I, I can <laughs> yeah, explain that one a little bit. Let's, uh, he's he's no, not going to no, say, oh, okay, I, I can't it. find an wanna... idiot to buy my gun, but maybe Joe Biden's that man, right? Maybe I mean, he'll buy my AK from me. Nobody I mean, else I, I will. Really... I don't think he's going to go, you know, oh, we were doing a buyback and you know, it's only for shitty American AK. <laughs> <laughs> it's an AK. You think they pay top dollar for that? It's got A right in the name. Yeah, just wait for a local buyback. You know, wait till Chapel Hill's doing some sort of crazy, you know, oh, well, well you know, get these dangerous guns off the street. You're like, absolutely. $200 yes. Best Buy gift card. Here you go. <laughs> that would, Can you negotiate at a buyback? I don't, Can you, I like, yeah. you know what? I mean, Here's how you negotiate at a buyback. You put up a picnic table right in front of the buyback and outbid them. <laughs> Keep Absolutely. those we guns on the street. Doing a, like a five hundred one c three, and like actually doing like a gun safety whatever thing, and just putting up booths in front of buybacks. Like, what do you have there? Oh, World War Two K ninety eight. Your grandfather had the. All right. Well, they're giving you a hundred bucks. Hundred and forty. Yes. That's the way mm -hmm. to go. That's I would love to do that. We, were, we, we even put up the paperwork. Like our mission statement was to take guns out of the hands of people who didn't want them or didn't feel safe with them and put them into the hands of private collectors. That, that sounds pretty friendly. Yeah, no, sound, I want to rephrase that to something that sounds worse. That's like oh, the strategy okay. I use where I wait until Girl Scout cookies come to my neighborhood and I'm faster than those little kids. So I run ahead of them with, with my own assortment of better store-bought cookies. <laughs> I sell them. And I like, Wouldn't you rather have some double stuff Oreos, man? I like the John Wick movies. Those, the, like, the first one especially was really, really real, realistic and gritty, and like it, it felt like it could have been like real life, like with a couple exceptions, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how I like the the next couple, like kind of go more toward that like graphic novel kind of like cartoon oh, yeah. assassin universe kind of thing. Like I like it still, but I, I think I wish they would have kept it more realistic. You know? Can mm -hmm. they do that without? Do you have to top yourself every movie? Can you just do it again? You know what would have been cool? And I hate to say it because this is Hollywood. This is what we always complain about, but a prequel. A prequel might have been cool because, Ooh. like, you know, he used to be this assassin and everything. And, like, I'm I'm always, like, in, in any movie, like, whenever it, it'll, it'll begin and it'll show, like, your hero, like, do a quick little mission. I'm always attached to that mission more mm -hmm. so than the big thought out oceans 11 sort of like, let's get the team together and plot and plan sort of thing. That's played out. I just, I like seeing that initial mission where they just go and like do a real straightforward, simple, like seek and destroy kind of thing. I could have watched a whole like John wick prequel movie about that. You know, they kind of set it up for that too. Cause they like, there's that whole thing. Like you don't just get out of this business. Like, do you remember what I had to do to get out? They keep referencing like this crazy thing he did where he just like killed so many people they, they you know, they sent him on the impossible mission. You know, they keep am, referencing it over and over. I want to see this prequel so much. That's the movie we want. We want the pre. It, it's better than the two and three that they've made. This is they need to go with this idea. Well, there's a four coming now um, and may, I think a five as well, because obviously, yeah, I mean, they keep making tons of money and. Look, the quality doesn't drop. It's just maybe the uh, you know the story, story isn't quite as good. But the, but the quality as far as the gun fu, the 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 hand to hand combat stuff, um, the visuals, the directing, the camera work, it's still pretty fucking cool to watch. It's a it's a roller coaster ride of a movie. I only saw the first one, but I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, they're good. I, I enjoyed it. I like seeing jujitsu, and I like seeing uh, like proper hand, uh, gun work. 
the only thing that bothered me about the last one is where they went because they you know it's obviously selling a lot of Terran stuff. Um, the only thing I didn't like is where they went like, oh, they're wearing heavy armor. Uh, here, here's a spicier nine millimeter. It's like, what the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> like, you, you have rifles all over here, and you're just like, no, nah, here's a nine millimeter that goes fast. <laughs> yeah, that that didn't make a ton of sense. Um, and also like. I think there may, maybe there were some like some some fancy slugs they they brought out for uh, yeah. for that that one black guy um, for, his, for his twelve gauge. That's pretty cool. I I like that a lot more than the 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 hot nine millimeter stuff because it's like I mean it's still a handgun. Like it's not yeah. even one of the more powerful ones. Like you couldn't maybe get a ten millimeter out there with some AP rounds. Like maybe I'll care. I don't know. Uh, but but or maybe a Smith and Wesson five hundred. Like like if they brought it like a big ass hand cannon or something. And and like show him like speed loading that like maybe I'm down with that like big fireballs coming out you doesn't even matter that it stopped it you you just crater your chest cavity yeah just concuss them by hitting the helmet or whatever um, but yeah there's plenty of AP rounds that they could have like brought out just bring out an AR-10 I, I don't know there's plenty of shit or what if you what if you brought out a, like a, a short barreled Barrett or something like that and he's doing that like, been fucking dope he's, he's like he's like loading that thing fast and just dun, 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 dun. yeah I'm maybe I, that's I, I think enough. It'll, so I got a, uh, I got a call that uh, so we couldn't we we obviously couldn't do it but like the uh, they had asked about using or potentially using I'm not gonna say like it was a sure thing but potentially using an AK-50 in John Wick Four. Hmm. What's an AK-50? Uh that was that was kind of the weapon system I was developing. Uh, still developing one of those things. We still have to go home and make the new prototypes. It's more of like a passion project right now, but like a 50 mm-hmm. BMG. Think of like an AK and a Barrett together, right? Very cool. And uh, they they were they were wanting to use it. I'm like, I don't fucking have one, unfortunately, but I would love to see that. Like, no matter what scene you're planning in that fucking movie where John Wick is about to go kick ass with a fucking 50 cal, I'm on board as a viewer. I want to yeah. see that. Mm-hmm. I like when they do a little research and they bring out some cool shit that I, I'm like, oh, He's got a desert desert tactical rifle there. Okay, all right. He's not fucking around. He got to have a little bullpup sniper. Let's all right. Cool, cool, cool. I, I like. I usually like his handgun selection and stuff like that. But I do wish there was some more exotic shit in there because that's the kind of stuff that turns me on. Like if he brought out, um, I don't even know what he'd do with it. But if he had one of those Anzio Ironworks twenty millimeter rifles. Oh my god. You ever shot one of those? I haven't shot one yet. I've seen them, and uh, I've, I've I almost shot Richards one time. Uh, we went out on the range, and he. Oh, does uh, Richard have a twenty? I think so. Well, he had it in the back of his van. I, I hope it was. Holy hit. fucking shit! Yeah, I didn't know he had one. They're like seventeen grand. That's not awful. It's Consider- not awful, but it's not. Well, it's not a. It's not a <laughs> carry piece by any means. You know? I'm thinking like a Barrett M107 is like fourteen grand. So I'm like, okay, for a twenty, like, all right, you can get it for ten. Get Richard, I could have. They'll they'll sell them to you for ten. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Um, but in any case, that Anzio Ironworks, for those who don't know, it's a 20 millimeter bolt action rifle. 20 millimeter, I'm pretty sure, is what the F 18 fighter jet shoots as its like machine gun round. Like, uh, 50 cal is 12.7 millimeter, and we're talking about 20 millimeters and way more powder. Like, like the whole thing is like, like way bigger, way bigger, like weapon system. Yeah, this is um, enormous. It's six feet, eight inches tall. Um, the different variants are different lengths. Um, I've, sh- I could, barely pick the goddamn thing up you know it's like 110 pounds the one i was playing with Jesus. um and you know it's it's not like a 110 pound barbell it's this it's a rifle so it's all it's balanced funny and yeah, uh, so you can't just like stand like call of duty and just hold it out you know i don't think i attempted that I, I like like it but it's the barrel is super long like it's above my head when i've got it sitting on its buttstock next to me and uh, I've shot I've shot two of them. I shot Anzios um, down in uh, down in Florida. Um, his place burnt up. I don't know if you know that. Like like his. I heard about that. Yeah, some people broke into um, his his shop, his factory building, whatever you want to call it. And he had, I don't remember the exact amount of. Is it twenty five Bradley? Is that the stuff? I'm the not stuff, sure. The stuff that Bradley, it's the Bradley fighting vehicle, whatever it shoots, it's twenty five millimeter or something like that. It's like this explosive chain gun shit. Anyway, he had, call it $3 million worth of that in his building. And uh, so they break into his building, probably trying to steal guns or whatever they could lay their hands on. And then they realize they're on candid camera. Well, the the DVR that's recording them is in a vault, like not just in a safe, it's in a vault. Yeah. And they just see wires going into like armor. 
And so they're like, well, guess we burn it to the ground. And so they burnt this place down. And of course he doesn't have his ammunition insured. So it's like a $3 million loss on that. That's unrecoverable. And then the building and every gun he owned, all of that's burnt to the ground. So at the time I was working with him, he only had like his show gun, the one he was like taking to shot show. And so we shot that a little bit. Um, but he didn't even have a scope anymore to mount on the thing. Cause I don't think a standard Leopold is going to stand up to the recoil. It's going to fucking shake the bitch apart. So I had to go up to like West Virginia to a guy who actually just had one and was friends with Anzio and shoot his. It was suppressed. And uh, this guy, I don't remember his name, but he had, he was an author. He had written many of the reloading manuals that I was like, I own your manuals. I was like, I was like, I, they're on a bookcase at my dad's house. Like, like his name been using this, huh? Robert. Oh, I wouldn't remember this guy's name at this point. It, West Virginia mountain dwelling, yeah um scary guy you know that narrows it down. Uh, <laughs> older gunsmith who writes a lot of books yeah yeah that, that would describe him pretty well um but i shot his 20 uh prone and my shoulder clicked for two and a half years <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like I've, I've only shot two things that hurt that actually hurt and kicked hard and one of them was his 20 uh shooting it prone because i'm not good at that and it i didn't have my shoulder on it properly and uh, it, and my shoulder clicked for two years legitimately when I would like just do something like this is click, 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 click. Jesus I'm like, Christ. Why'd you do it prone instead of sitting down? Um, I don't he didn't have a table to put it on. Like, like, like we're just in his backyard shooting the thing. And again, it weighs like 100 and something pounds, even, even more loaded and with a scope on it and everything. It was something and then, with recoil. Um, it can actually come off the table pretty easily and just fall over. It's a ton of recoil too. It, it, yeah, it's. I mean, it's a it's a gargantuan fucking gun. Is it for anti material stuff like armor piercing? Yeah. It's well, it's not meant to be a bolt action rifle. It's something that this, it's just a guy. Like it, it, it'd be like if one of us was just like, hey, what if we, what if we just made a, a gigantic bolt action rifle? Well, what bullet would we put in it? Well, what a fighter jet shoot. Let's put that in. Like, <laughs> <just> shoot. <laughs> yeah, that, that's literally what hellfires. What do you think? <laughs> like, yeah, like, like it would it, 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 be like registered as a destructive device. It's a DD. Out. Yeah, yeah, and um, um, and then the other thing that I shot that that actually hurt was um, what's Bob's first name? Dangerous, I think. Dangerous um, Bob. Dangerous Bob. You know, Dangerous Bob. I don't. Yeah. I know people who run into circles, but I have never met him yet. Yeah, like, like Ira Sellers and all those guys. Um, dangerous Bob. <laughs> that's what dangerous, they call him. Yeah, that's what they call him. Um, you'll notice he's missing um, a little bit of one of his fingers because um, he, he blew it off depriming 50 BMG uh, shells. And uh, uh, his uh, whenever I'd mess around with him, it seemed like his like favorite shit to play with was explosives and flamethrowers and big bore guns that he'd make himself and i don't remember exactly what he'd done but essentially what he had done was take like a 20 gauge um single shot breakdown shotgun and make brass for it and then load up big bore rifle shells for that so he had like i'm making up numbers here because i don't remember the specifics but let's just say it was shooting a 900 grain bullet 1600 feet per second or something like that and a breakdown shotgun that weighs two and a half, four pounds, somewhere in there, this light mm -hmm. ass fucking, you know, like, like chest, like wooden stocked 20 gauge, like thing you'd see in a pawn shop somewhere for a hundred dollars. Something and meant it, for a quarter of the recoil. A tenth the recoil. It kicked so fucking hard. <laughs> Every time I would shoot it, I was, I was like, all right, well, can't flinch on camera. So I have to lean into this motherfucker and squeeze and just take it. And it's the equivalent of like, like telling some big professional boxer or something to like hit you in the chest as hard as they can, but you can't flinch or move. You're just going to be like, all right, do it while I try to look badass. <laughs> <laughs> like, and my shoulder was black and blue. The, to the oh, hello, my friends, this is pretty intense. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would lean so far into it. Like, like my front knee would be bent like almost to the ground, like, like all my weight, 95% of my weight is on my front foot. My back foot is just, just barely touching the ground and it would rock me all the way back. It was awful. It was awful to shoot. I think I shot it five times. What video was that? I don't even know if we used the fucking footage. It was it, it was one of those days where we were in Tennessee, like messing with like a Bofors gun and a flamethrower and uh, like some M240 Bravos. We, we shot like five things in a day. And uh, yeah, it was the flamethrower video that I did where I like roasted a, a pig and yeah. the pig had like little pipe bombs tied all over it. 
Oh no, that was the mannequin. They had a mannequin with little pipe bombs all over it. And then, then I roasted a pig and pretended to eat some of it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you pretended? Um, this yeah, I didn't cook a pig with napalm and then eat the napalm. I just put some ribs that I bought oh. from a barbecue joint on the back of the pig. Damn, you couldn't it's tell that? Fourth, fourth wall. No, it's fourth fucking wall. gag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fourth wall destroyed. You yeah. yeah. You know, well, my no, childhood. There are people who still true. believe he's Russian, so there are absolutely people who thought that he was pulling meat off of a flame throne. I mean, I made it look like I was. We had like a nice, delicious rack of ribs attached to the back of that roasted pig. But yeah, I wasn't going to eat pig. I had cooked with napalm. Yeah, it's not safe. Probably not. Going back to the recoil thing, at one point I had, uh, I really only had recoil fuck me up one time. And uh, it was one of our 50 prototypes for the AK-50. Uh, had failed. So, you know, semi-auto guns cycle a lot softer than, than you know, just single shot guns. It failed, so the, the bolt seized, and so it basically was a single-shot rifle. And I was leaned over. This was entirely my fault. I was leaned over really aggressively because I had the barrel on a nine board. And it's just, like, resting there. So all the recoil is going to my shoulder. Had no recoil pad or whatever. Just had a PRS-style buttstock with plastic on the back. Leaned super forward, and it broke my clavicle. Mm. I, like, you can see. I still have it in slow motion. You can see in beautiful iPhone slow motion all of the rearward motion and like it broke my clavicle pretty early on and all of that you're seeing pushing in is like past the bone oh oh god is it still fucked up those clavicle injuries never never heal all the way right i don't know why they don't fix them it wasn't fully off like it wasn't it wasn't a complete fracture it was just like it was it was it was fractured. cracked so you're okay ah oh, good yeah i see guys with clavicles that they don't put them back. Like, so here's the bone. It breaks, and then it heals like a Z, a letter yeah. Z. Yeah, like and it's layer like, on why top don't of you? Me. Look, I broke my leg. It had a problem. They put a plate on the side of it with screws. It's like an internal splint, and then you just live with that forever. Why don't they do that with clavicles? Why do they let them heal like Zs? They don't do that with legs, arms. I don't know, but I've always been afraid of that injury. And it's a really easy bone to. I've, I've said before, a guy I played hockey with took a check at a really bad angle and it like severed it in two, like broken half. And I remember being in the locker room. I was, I wasn't playing the game and like just seeing like as he'd move like the little bits and he was like green about to vomit. We were maybe like 15 at the time. And like now, like you see him like with his shirt off, like one shoulder is slightly closer to his center mass than the other. And if he like moves it forward, you can just see just like what he said instead of like this, like a, a straight line and then a block and then a slightly lower clavicle line. Yikes. Like it's, it seems like a lazy ass surgery. We should have that figured out. Dude, fuck that. Yeah, looks awful. What if you yeah. broke both of them and you're just <laughs> all fucked up, all T Rex armed? I was gonna say my luck, they're gonna go in with like a screw and try to do the plate thing and have one like that's just like a just a cut hair too long, just punch puncture my fucking carotid artery. It's just like, oh neat. Uh -oh. Now I get it. That's why you don't do that. I should have just dealt with looking a little silly. <laughs> I guess you didn't even break yours, so you don't even look silly. You look fine. If I were my my buddy who that happened to, I would have been pissed. Like once that healed, I would have been like, "What the fuck, man? Like this is so I'm never gonna be the same. Like none of my movements are gonna be the same. Muscle memory, everything's different. Like well, why couldn't you just fix it correctly? I bet. I bet if you were like maybe if you were a sports like like if you're a pro professional athlete, like maybe they go in and do it, but maybe it's just not necessary for a, the average person. I don't know. <laughs> What if they give you the option and uh, there's a different co difference in copay or something and your parents just said, no, they just don't do that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> just like, there's no solution for this. And you look it up. My parents were fucking cheap. <laughs> I'm, it's like I'm, the family guy where they're like where joe goes in and they're like well mr swanson we can give you new legs but unfortunately your insurance doesn't cover it and it's like well what does my insurance cover and they're like well, this wheelchair, Mr. Swanson. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, <no. laughs> I, they went on vacation one time, and, and they're like, "What? what's all that luggage you got, Joe? He's like, oh, it's that big bag is the machine that makes my large intestines work. <laughs> he's like, oh. He's such a dark, depressing <laughs> like, character. He is depressed. He, hey, so, so Biden did the five or six executive actions, most of them being about gun restrictions gun study what did he do so there was uh, i think it was six executive actions um one of them was uh well actually i think two of them were pretty much just lip service it was like 
hey, ATF, you make this report every year about firearms trafficking that they already do. So okay. I was really confused by that one. I'm like, okay, cool. Keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. <laughs> the other one was like, it was an inner city violence uh, intervention kind of thing. They were just going to put like a little bit of funding toward uh, preemptive measures in, uh, in urban environments and stuff like that. One of them was about the arm brace thing. It was like saying like within 30 days or 60 days, uh, the DOJ is going to make a ruling about the pistol braces. Which I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. Cause like, they've already done that. Like, four times so they haven't all right so one i thought that one was over and it was was, uh, we'll see i don't know i don't like these let's say that he successfully bans arm braces sure i don't like it but i see it as a parallel to like the bump stocks which i didn't like either you know same yeah that's one of those like no matter what side you're on like i I didn't i didn't like that bit at all We, we actually just got that overturned i think the firearm policy coalition uh, just won a lawsuit in federal court about the bump stock ban. Oh, so you can have them again? I, I'm not an attorney. I dropped out of law school, so I have uh, no fucking clue. Well, you made it further than me. So. I made it. Yeah. I made it three semesters. I know someone who melted dozens of them. <laughs> Maybe oh, for the best. You know somebody. <laughs> um, somebody wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I. I didn't like that they banned bump stocks. I kind of sort of like mentioning that he banned bump stocks because, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I didn't like that he actually did it. Um, yeah. And I don't like that he's banning the arm braces. It doesn't impact me. I don't have one. I didn't really desire one. But yeah, any ban, I just check. I'm like, do I have anything? On <laughs> <laughs> so what else did he do? This the arm brace study thing. The arm brace thing, and then there's uh, they're also making a determination about. Ghost guns, which is basically just 80% that you finish at home or making your own firearm, even the 3D printing community, stuff like that. Like basically just guns without a serial number, which from the beginning of the country has always been legal to do. Um, They're just trying to, I guess, make a ruling about that, which, again, they've already done. Like any 80% firearm, like an 80% ghost gun that gets shipped to you uh, usually comes with a letter from the ATF that they photocopied like, hey, we sent this into the ATF asking if this was okay and legal to do according to the law. And they said, yes. And so it's really interesting that he's going back and basically just like, Hey, ATF on these two issues, re-roll the dice until we get the answer we want, which is, I don't really like that. Always been legal, but, and and I'm not correcting you. I'm telling the audience, they have to fit all the same rules that other guns do. So you can't make like a short barrel rifle or something like that. You're you're hundred percent right. Yeah. 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 You can't make a machine gun at home and be like, well, I made it myself. You're like, good for you. You're going to jail. Yeah. Yeah. But so long as it fits the other rules, if you finish it at home or make it at home, it's fine. So, all right. So that's four of them. Maybe you're doing pretty well at this. What else Uh, was there? Do you remember? I may have mi- I, I'm probably missing one along the way, but the other one was uh, the new ATF director. And I purposely saved this for last because that's an interesting can of worms. Uh, David Chipman, I believe, uh-huh. uh, who is like a professional, uh, currently a professional anti-gun activist, but he's been at the ATF for like 25 years. Dude's got the most punchable face you could possibly <laughs> uh, What's his name again? I'll show his picture. David Chipman. And uh, he was one of the ATF agents at Waco and has like a selfie with a rifle in front of a bunch of burning kids. And like, just like the dude is like the most cartoonish villain of the ATF you could possibly have that he just was appointed uh, that Biden couldn't even pronounce the name of the organization correctly. He's, he said twice uh, is uh, promoting him to the head of the AFT. Oh yeah. Twice he called it the AFT. It. <laughs> yeah uh, not a big yeah. deal but it fits the narrative of the whole senile right you know, right and it, it's, like, uh, i don't think it's the biggest well it would if one once is easy to write off and then as soon as he did it a second time I'm like okay i get it yeah um that one too so as you mentioned he's an anti-gun guy now in charge of the atf and right. i don't like it i'm pro gun if you don't know yeah i guess you watch the show i'm up a little bluer than the other two hosts, but pro sure. gun. And uh, I'm like, so I don't like this move. I see it as a parallel to the um, coal guy who they put in charge of the um, EPA. The EPA. Yeah. 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 When, when they, the guy well, was, who would know polluting best? He, yeah. he, he had several <laughs> active lawsuits against the EPA. And he, like you said, he was a 
coal producer or coal owner, something like that, and now he's in charge of the environment, and you're just like, oh my god, the fox is guarding the hen house. Well, now I am a coal man. <laughs> so this now is my this son H W <laughs> guy's in charge of the e, of the ATF and or AFT, some call it. <laughs> yeah, some, some, some. <laughs> people are saying, yeah, we're having the FIB look into it. But... <laughs> yeah, it's um, and it's an interesting debacle. It's one of those things yeah. where I'm like, yeah, well, you know what? They'll probably tie him up in the Senate for a minute on his confirmation because, you know, as it turns out, um, while it's not a career defeating move, uh, taking selfies in front of a bunch of burning children is not a career ender, uh, but it's not good for your career. Burning yeah. children, oh. literally. At Waco, Literally, like oh, it was Waco. The, Waco, uh, the Waco debacle, where I think it was like seventy three or seventy eight. You know, men, women, children died, like burned mm -hmm. to death from the ATF. He took a selfie, and they identified like in the background. There's like, yeah, that's one of the like Uncle Ben style skeletons uh, in in the back there. It's really, really kind of fucked up. Yeah, what a what a ghoul. I just looked it up because it sounds over the top. It's just a ghoulish ghoulish picture. He's standing there like he just like valiantly won a hard fought battle, and it's like. No, this is Waco. Like, there, there weren't, you know, centurions marching out to meet you in the battle. Like, no, there was a massacre. Yeah, and it's like... Yeah, you're a big David Koresh fan, right, Taylor? Hugh, the biggest! <laughs> I know yeah. so many things about him, such as, you know, lots of people died at Waco. That well, I know you've got that tattoo. <laughs> that, that's supposed to be a secret. That full <laughs> back piece you've got. <laughs> well, I'm adding a full chest connection. To uh, <laughs> a full got a good David excuse. Koresh... No. No, he's saying it's a Far Cry tattoo. Yeah, I'm going to get that picture of him looking crazy with the whites of his eyes showing above his pupils. God. Yeah. That guy's yeah, that was, was, that's not great. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, even if you agree, like, that those guys were a little crazy, which, you know, if you have a religious cult, you know, hey, you know, fair enough. I see why people would say that. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was a pretty big miscalculation, even just from optics on the ATF so, and FBI's part. So scorched earth on it, which like, is yeah. really good. You're going after like one dude for technically what's, I mean, just barely a felony. Yeah, yeah that that one clip of the FBI agent, I'm sorry, FIB agent up on like the, <laughs> he's on like the eve of the roof and uh, through the second floor wall, you see machine gun fire coming through at him and he just like rolls off the roof. It's like, God, they were not fucking around in there. Some of them though, like I saw some of the, the breakdowns afterward, they were like some of the agents that were killed, I think were like friendly fire. Cause like you yeah. had agents that went in and then you have agents later get to the roof, didn't see it. And they're spraying MP fives through the window of where their buddy just went in. It's like, Ooh, fuck buddy. Like, no, yeah. Agent K must've had a sale that week because every one of those <laughs> fucking feds has an MP five, just fucking going to work in there. Yeah, that was a wild situation. It definitely shaped the way they handle things like that permanently I think. yeah that was terrible optics Yo. and then it wasn't all that long after that you had the uh alien gonzalez thing where you had atf with the gun with the i made i think it was an mp5 yeah. again maybe pointed at the yeah. child's head finger off the trigger i believe but it's been a while since oh. i've seen the image he's in the cabinet and you're like got that whole thing that going was on clinton right am i crazy or is that Bush? yeah I, I want to say Clinton. It's a '90s photo. This was yeah. all during Clinton. This was all like from like it's it's yeah. Janet Reno. That's the that, that yeah. that's who was catching all the heat. See, Clinton was so good about that. Like 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 <laughs> uh, for for whatever reason, I blame Janet Reno for all of this and not Clinton, who was the president of the United States. Like like you don't see that now. Yeah, that well, I mean, but after that was the Ruby Ridge thing. Like he was like back to back to back. Well, what was so, Ruby Ridge? Ruby Ridge was where the guy, uh, they had basically entrapped the guy into making an SBS, which is a short barrel shotgun, uh, because they wanted him to inform on like somebody who knew who was part of like this white supremacist biker group or some shit like that in Idaho. And they're like, so they entrapped him. They're like, hey, man, could you take the shotgun for me and like cut the barrel? Like, ah, I'd be super cool, man. I just appreciate it. And he's mm -hmm. like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then he did it. And he's like, you've just committed a felony. You're going to report on these people. And he didn't want to do it. He's like, no, dude, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And so they went and, like, surrounded his house and everything. I ended up, like, they used an MP5 and, like, I don't want to get too graphic or anything, but, like, they shot a dog. Oh, they, they shot a, they shot the, a dog while, like, the, the father and son were out hunting. I think Randy Weaver. Huh. Uh, and then the kid goes crazy because, like, two agents pop out of the bush and, like, light up his fucking dog. So he starts firing at the agents. They chew off uh, the kid's arm with an MP5. Like, he's, like, a seven-year-old seven child right and then uh like chase him back up 
And then one of the FBI snipers takes a shot through the door, kills like his pregnant wife. Like it's, it's a whole fucked up situation. Eh, I haven't Christ. determined if this is bad yet. Did the seven year old <laughs> resist was, a little? Was he asking for it? Is yeah. This- did, yeah. Did the cop yell taser? <laughs> he may have. But with an MP5, it'd have to be like, Taser, 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 Taser. Yeah, that's fucked up. I never, I didn't know all those details about. God, if I were still making videos, I would make that video where I'm shooting machine guns and going, Taser. A little less forgiving of that stuff these days. Yeah, we just <laughs> like two strikes. We had two strikes going on at once, and if we didn't get one of them removed, I would have had three in a row. Wow! So we had our channel removed. Like what, were the, what, they, what, what they hit you for? Yeah, what they fuss about? A couple different videos. One of them that really pissed me off was German machine guns of World War II, which is one of our most popular videos. It's like right? a million or something, but like it. It, they 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 claimed it for hate speech. I'm like, I went to drive tanks, which is just a firearms museum, basically. We didn't talk politics. I didn't say anything you're not supposed to say. I was just like, hey, let's shoot all these German machine guns of World War II because there's a bunch that I think are really cool. And they they flagged it for hate speech. And they, they it was our second strike. I'm like, that's really confusing. To that's me. outrageous. Wow. Yeah. It's not like you were there like, and this is a tremendous German machine. If it had been a little better, might have brought the Third Reich to victory. Now on to <laughs> the shooting portion. of It's like you weren't. There was no swastikas. There was no hiling in the middle of the video. Like we, well, the only thing we used like German music, but we were even careful to not use the period music, like anything referring to Reich or whatever. We used like things that were close that didn't have any crazy lyrics. Like we, we even translated the lyrics to make sure there was nothing. <laughs> now we were wearing clan hoods, of course. <laughs> you have to get bogged down in the fucking details. Mar- <laughs> you translate the music. It's like marching through Poland, killing the Juden. La 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 la. Wait, is that the Russian the theme? Victory music in COD Four. That's dark. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, oh, that's, my favorite part is like, uh, like I think the original like national anthem of germany like deutschland deutschland uber alles is referring to all these places like it's basically like ours like you know from these mountains to this ocean yeah. just like it's from a the lakes of Minnesota. yeah but uh, like when you realize like wait a minute hold on you pull up a map you're like these aren't places in germany <laughs> they're, they're referring to like from the people that used to normandy. Normandy. it's like cool <laughs> just go take like a world war one song nobody's mad about world war one as it yeah, nobody out, cares about the Kaiser anymore. Yeah. They had the spiky hats. That was a good look. They shouldn't have gone away from it. I love the spiky hats. Yeah. That you can attack. Well, I don't think they were made for attack. It was more for aesthetics, but you could. I, I think they were made for attack. And in my head, obviously, you'd use it to like bash someone yeah. when you take it off and hit them with it. But I like to imagine that one German <laughs> private who just like full on went rhino mode with it. <laughs> And was just discharged in. I like to imagine yeah. that Taylor Look in particular Dita. was a boss <laughs> character in World War One with the <laughs> extra long spike and extra thick helmet. Yeah, I'm like, I don't want any body armor, or anything. Give me 45 spiked helmets. And I'm like, <laughs> a, like a Russian. Have you seen those Russian bear hunting suits? What? No. Be like that. Yeah. Look up a Russian bear hunting. Oh, suit. Oh God. It's, it's a. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a power big, suit. It's a big suit, covers the whole body, and it's got nothing but like nails protruding, like six inch nails, the entire body, arms. It would make an awesome YouTube video to recreate it. I don't think anybody's done it because like even then, the way they test it is like hilarious shit. It it looks like outtakes from a Marvel video, a Marvel movie. Like there's one part where they have like that log that swings from ropes like, and, and they just like let it go and it swings into the guy's chest and sends him flying and then he's just like i'm okay I'm it's great I'm okay what the fuck mm-hmm. this is like hellraiser yeah it's it's crazy. Like hellraiser it's pretty cool yeah I, I you know i wouldn't feel totally safe but i'd feel safer definitely i feel like if i fell and tried to catch myself on my arm like i'd die no, the other spikes would protect you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just have a wounded arm and chest. It's like dividing by a negative. Of course, got it. I would have changed the entire plot to the Revenant. Oh, is this what you're talking about, Kyle? Project Grizzly testing the different inter- iterations of the suit, and it's oh, yeah? kind of like in in football gear, just getting abused. Trying yeah, it's, to- I think the suit is white. There's multiple suits. I haven't seen it in years. Different iterations. Yeah. That's very yeah. fun. <laughs> this is such a stupid idea. 
<laughs> I've been in a bike suit before. That was pretty sick. Like, like, like that thing really does provide a ton of protection. But oh my god, this is so absurd. The, the one at 15 <laughs> seconds is outrageous. It is. It looks so protective. And then at 20, keep watching. At 25 seconds, they just start beating him with bats to see if he. If can... anyone wants to watch this, it's called Project Grizzly, testing the different iterations of the suit. Good God. It's HD video quality. <laughs> I oh, yeah. He that does look kind of badass, though, right? He does look cool. He looks, he's as big as a house. <laughs> and then he gets caught at 40. Is it just seconds. me, or have they built in fake biceps? That may just, <laughs> I thought so too, but it looks like it may just be a sheer amount of padding. Because they were hitting him in the arm with two by fours with full force. See, if you, see, like, if you took this idea and then you, like, mounted, um, like little guns on the forearm pointed forward and you had like a squeeze grip to activate them so you could point the arms and <laughs> they push him down a cliff at one minute twice and he is falling in a dangerous looking way this is yeah. reminding me of like the iron man 2 scene where they're showing like the other people's attempts at building the fucking uh -huh. armor, armor it's exactly that they yeah hit dude, the car dude this hill they throw him down it's ridiculously dangerous looking <laughs> Dude, the thing at like a minute 25 when they hit him with a car he goes like 20 yards back <laughs> fuck no way that this guy oh my god they hit him so hard with this car <laughs> all right so they take like an old like pickup truck like a like a like a, a late or 80s early 90s pickup truck and they put like a big chunk of wood on the front like a wall like it's dry it's a driving wooden wall and they hit him going no less than 25 miles an hour <laughs> what a stupid project so fun i'd watch them do it i'm oh, surprised yeah. like some like b movie didn't like buy the suit from them just to make it they're like